episode number 153 with Mike Pearson. Podcast. This is Steve Barton. This is Mike Snyderman. And this week we have Mike Pearson. Uh, he, uh, we got to spend some time with Mike. Who the hell's uh, that? Oh, I know him. I know him as the Wizard. Steve, <laughs> I, I did. I didn't know he had a real name. Okay, I, I think I, <laughs> yes. I, I think I know who we're talking about. <laughs> yes, with the Wizard. We uh, we got to spend some time with him out at the uh, WSOP last year uh, at the house. He was with us and Alex and the, and the guys. And uh, is everyone from San Francisco that strange? I mean, I thought <laughs> I, I thought I thought Alex was an outlier. Well, we're two for two right now because we got Mike and Alex. So right, uh, you know, the, all these uh, brilliant young guys, and you know, half the time you don't know what, you're ta- what they're talking about. But uh, <laughs> you, you and I can do our best to keep it somewhat grounded, I guess. Yeah, we'll try to keep up. But, uh, he's just a super smart dude. Uh, he's won a uh, one of the main event. Um, Circuit rings uh, for 150k um, cash. D- he spent some time up with you after I left from Tahoe, didn't he? Yeah, he made okay. a pretty good. He made a pretty deep run at the main event again. Yeah, right. Yeah, I think he got 24th or something like that. I, I think he got in the 20s. Um, yeah, so just a super smart tournament guy, and um, yeah, just like you said, a real wizard. So I'm I'm excited about this one. I've been wanting to have him on since I met him um, at the house and. Uh, we got him. Right. Nice work, Steve. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Pe- pestering people, as I've said, is one of your many, many skills. They, eventually, they just it's easier to just to agree to come on the show. Yeah, it is. It is. Really, it, it's its a gift. I they think, they, they can change their phone numbers, but then there's Telegram, Carrier Pigeon. you got so many ways to get in touch with people. I've been u- using uh, Ravens lately, actually. They're, they're quite handy. You just strap the note to them and they just keep knocking on the uh, window until they finally open it up and then they stick the note in your face. There you go, Steve. Yeah, whatever works. So what else is new? I'm sitting in my new apartment. Nice! Right on. How is it? How's it feel? It's real nice. Um, you know, it's pretty It's pretty funny, Steve. How, uh, 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 not that every conversation needs to deal, around, deal with crypto, but of course it's been such a crazy month for the, the altcoins, which I have a bunch of. Yes. I I, feel, I see myself as rich, and I'll be regretting this terribly. But I've spent like, believe it or not, almost twenty thousand getting a nine hundred foot square square foot apartment <laughs> together. I mean, it really is. This is like twice as much you would spell, spend on a, probably a five hundred thousand dollar house. You'd be so thrifty. But um, you know, I wanted a nice sofa. I wanted the fifty five inch TV. I mean, I literally had nothing. I got a you know pretty good bed and. Nice bunk bed for my son, and you know, but uh, right on, right on. Got yeah, my son, I, got my I, son the PlayStation, and you know, some of the things I probably could. I didn't really need the three hundred dollar vacuum cleaner. Didn't I? Didn't I? Didn't need the Dyson, especially you know. But uh, anyways, yeah, the last vacuum cleaner I bought was uh, fifty five dollars, and I'm pretty sure it was used. <laughs> I would not have bought that. <laughs> I, did. I almost shit a purple Twinkie today, though. I spent uh, almost 500 bucks on a rug and a tree. Um, so it, uh, But I had to sleep on it. I, I saw the th- stuff, and I had to go home and really think about it and sleep on it. And then the next day, uh, just went Man, out and got it. You so. and I are very different. Yeah, I got a $500 uh, rug in the middle of it, plush black rug. To <laughs> My, uh, my it, rug was 288 it, 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 I had to sleep on it. I couldn't just fire uh, I'm trying to think of the most absurd thing that I've purchased here. Um, I don't know. Oh, well, I bought a bunch of artwork, too. Oh, right. Uh, you know, I went to Fine Art America or whatever this – and I originally just wanted to get a couple, like, like photographs of um, – I got my, my son uh, t- these comforters, which are like space turtles. I don't okay. know, like, tur- like a sp- I don't know. It's 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 pictures of of nature mixed with pictures of outer space or what? I don't know what it is. But I got a couple. So I wanted to get a couple pictures of turtles to hang on his wall. Come up with a turtle themed room. He likes he likes animals, and he's kind of inter- he's really in- into sea turtles lately. <laughs> but um, then I got myself a bunch of paintings too. So I spent like twenty five hundred dollars there on wall art. I gotta uh, come down and see your place. Is it is there is there a place I can crash? No. No. I mean, I have four beds, but yeah, I, I like to keep them empty, Steve, in case important <laughs> people come by. 
no, of course. Oh, yeah. You got to come by. I would think, Steve, because you kind of um, you're kind of into the sciences, the natural world, too. Right. And it's one of your many, many passions. I'm staring at two posters right now of uh, the universe. Yeah. Well, I got two uh, two four by four big paintings. Um, they're like, uh, you know, photographs, which are made into like acrylic. Both of them are, are like of like nebulas, oh, just yeah. the bright bursting colors and um that was kind of my design thing is that I was going to have like a lot of black, black butt with a lot of like wild colors for like, you know, like pillows and comforters and, you know, things like that. Yeah. So that's kind of, but uh, I think they're, I really can't wait to hang these things. I think they're going to be pretty cool. And then I got a couple other, a couple other cool pieces of artwork. So, um, cool. Cool. A couple science fiction y things, you know, but uh, anyways, yeah, it's fun. I like it. Good. Um, Good. Like I said, I'll probably, like I said, crypto is like living on the razor's edge, and I still have most of my money there. And um, I, I hate to sell low, but there's one guy who, who's, you know, who says he'll buy anything, and I keep looking at the price. I'm like, eh, I might have to sell him a couple, couple coin here. Dude, I, um, I got uh, what do I have now? I got, um, I got Ripple. Uh, I have Omizigo. I've got. Um, uh, Lumens, which is tanking as we speak. Um, Iota, Litecoin. Of course, I've got like four Litecoin, I think. I got ADA, um, Fun, Ethereum, and Neo. You got all in uh, in with all these, what, like two weeks ago? Yeah. So you should be up on all of them right now, other than maybe Lumen, right? Yeah. Um, or, or probably Ripple, too, it has, has stayed the same or gone down a little bit in the last two weeks. Yeah, Ripple's gone down a little bit. You know what's interesting, though? Remember how we are talking about uh, Satoshi and how, like, you kind of have to base your, your thing on how many – what it equates to in Bitcoin? Right. That that's has gone, gone up. up. Yes. So, so that's good. Uh, so that's good. Um, I don't completely understand it, how some of these are just tanking and uh, and I somehow have more Satoshi. I, I, well – yeah, the Bitcoin. So basically, you could sell if you originally put one Bitcoin in, you could sell all your stuff and now maybe have one point two Bitcoin. Yes, that's exactly it. Yeah. So yeah, and uh, if the Bitcoin price goes goes wild and goes up, uh, yeah, basically through all my trading and the, these altcoins um, and keeping the satoshis go up, it's like I've added four and a half Bitcoin the last five or six weeks. Nice. So, but those that can go the other way. I, I had my first. Well, I'm not gonna, you know. Everyone has their story here, and all the traders now of what could have been if they held on to this and that. But I had my first real. Looks like it's not over yet. Uh, there's this guy Hunter who's given me. Uh, he knows quite about a bit about crypto. Um, but he gave me a, the specific sale advice yesterday afternoon. Mm-hmm. He's like, it, he's like, it might be a little late. But getting on this uh, this coin, it was uh, let me see, E Boost, E B S T, E B S T. Okay. And um, I'm looking at. It. I hate buying high, but it's already gone up. I mean, the thing was already up like a thousand percent over the week. He's like, I, st- I think it's still going up. Um, you can still make a make a price on it. So I kind of debated. Uh, I immediately try- had to get money from. Um, from the blockchain to Bitrix because mm-hmm. I have all my coin on Binance and that took a, like a couple That's hours. That's what I on Binance, yeah. So it took a few hours, but finally I did buy it. But I bought it at its absolute peak and it's down like 50%. I, and I put I put $10,000 on it. So wow. I, I've lost $4,000 since I bought that. Um, oh, I'm sorry. I'm checking it right now. Almost 5000 Oh, So okay. well. this, this could be my... My fir- yeah, I just decided to hang my hang my nuts out there with that one. That's like my, one of my big. I think my biggest initial buy of a stock. Well, I I fired a grand on MGT the stock um, for um, uh, it's it's basically we we asked uh, Mark the Bitcoin guy about it and he wasn't too familiar because he's only doing uh, um, only doing the the crypto and not buying stock in it. But I bought stock oh, yeah. in it. Oh, yeah, I don't know what that is. Yeah, yeah, it's basically a company that kind of invests in these for you, and you can buy a stock in it. So I bought a grand worth of stock at four. It was down to four forty two, and I tried to get it. And the next day, the market opened up at like four sixty six. I got it at uh, I got a grand worth at uh, four sixty eight, which gave me a little over two hundred shares. And then um, 
It's currently at about three ninety five, so that was not the best investment I've ever made. But it's been all the way up to seven. And when you look at the two year history of the stock, it does take these spikes. And unfortunately, I thought I was getting it at the bottom, but uh, apparently I wasn't. So now I got to yeah, wait for it to go. I up. might I'm be. Wait uh, it goes up about above five, and then I'm going to sell ten percent of it, um, and then keep the other ninety uh, percent of it. So I'll sell twenty something shares. And then I'll roll that back in once it goes back down. And it, when you look at the overall picture of the chart, it definitely follows some predictable patterns. Um, so I'm going to try to day trade that one and play with that. I think it'd be fun. I don't know if it's time to uh, yeah, get out and rebuy all this stuff in like a month, you know, if, if Bitcoin is going to drop further. But Bitcoin, I'm looking, it's dropped like 400 bucks since we started this, <laughs> this call. <laughs> I mean, I woke up from my little uh, afternoon nap. I was exhausted, and Bitcoin was down to 13,600. I was like, fuck, that was just like a few minutes ago. Now it's 13,100. So, um, yeah, yeah, at its, at its low from the day here. So, anyway, Steve, I don't know, but uh, yeah. like, like I said, it's the only thing that I'm, I'm just terrified of. I, I, if it goes down, I mean, I, I'm like down 20,000 <laughs> over like three days here. But as long as it goes down semi slowly, so I can get the money off a good amount. Yeah. But I'm I'm just terrified. Like I think we've said before, there's the day that it went from like eleven thousand to nineteen thousand in like five hours. Yes. Yeah. I'll never well, we both of us day. both of us were just looking at our phone, saying, "What is this? This, this has got to be a mistake, right?" Yeah. Exactly. So if it can go way up eight thousand in one day, um, it can go down eight thousand or more in one day. I would think so. Yeah. So. But, uh, I don't know. Oh, a little update um, uh, for you guys on uh, Poker Mania. Um, uh, the owner contacted everyone. Everyone moved their uh, uh, moved their funds over to the new site. They didn't even cash out. So, uh, um, yeah, I, I hope you guys are liking the site. Um, it's uh, six four spades dot com. You can uh, come play with the fish. Join me. They got the low buy-in MTTs, cash games. Uh, they got a nightly fifteen hundred, and they've got some three K guarantees on the uh, weekends. I got third in the first one I played uh, on the site, and I made three hundred bucks. I love this site. I love it even more than Poker Mania. Um, there's no huds allowed, so the pros pretty much stay away, um, and it's where the fish come to play. This is as good as it gets. Uh, join me, and you can get your rake back. Use the code HU Poker. You get fifteen percent rake back. You can deposit using crypto, like we're talking about. You can use PayPal or even a credit card. 64spades.com, where the fish come to play. So, right. Enjoy. Even Aaron can win money on that site. Yes. Well, <laughs> let's, let's, not, let's not go crazy. I can't, I can't just kick you in the ass all the time, Steve. i got to find, find another target every now and then. <laughs> well, how about Mike Pearson? Let's, uh, let's bring him on. Mike Pearson. Hey, how's it going? Good, good. How are you doing? Pretty good. Right on. Thanks for coming on the show. I'm here with my yeah, partner in crime, you. Mikey. Yeah, sounds fun. <laughs> right on. Well, um, what? Uh, <clears throat> let's see. Where should we start? Um, I, I was going to let you. I was going to let you conduct this conversation, Steve. I was just going to make bitter comments in the background. But if you it's want, probably me to... a good decision. <laughs> tripping all over my tongue here. Uh, Mike, uh, we're talking, uh, we've met, uh, at least I met you uh, at the um, at the house out in Vegas uh, with Alex, and uh, right away I was really impressed just by your uh, work ethic, and uh, Mike referred to you as the wizard, um, <laughs> just really, really smart with uh, with poker. How did how did you get started in poker? When, when did I didn't you come with? up with the wizard, by the way. I came oh, in and said, did? hey, I come in and said, hey, and I accidentally called him Mike, and he actually grabbed me by the throat. He said, call me the wizard. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah, that was uh, Alex's doing. Uh, we had a little crew. You know, there was, I was the wizard. Alex was the professor. We had the donkey fish. And we had the uh, the boy genius. <laughs> so, uh, Who yeah, is, we were... is, was Evan the boy genius? Who's the, who's oh, the I, boy I, genius? I don't want to, I don't want to divulge too much. Oh, I've already okay. said, I've already outed Alex. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's good. So how, how did you get started playing? Have you always been in San Francisco? or? Uh, yeah, I mean, I grew up in the Bay Area. Um, I started playing online. Um, I was 17, 
made an account in my dad's name and uh you know i was a senior in high school so i was living at home and uh i had a friend a friend transfer me five bucks online and like learned to play at the penny tables and okay. uh, eventually over the summer worked it up to like 1500 nice. um but that was just you know teaching myself to play and I, I put it on the shelf for a few years just wasn't really interested and then um you know some years ago i'd, I'd go in when i had like you know an extra paycheck <laughs> beyond next month's rent and <laughs> see how it went and um, was there any was there any stu- was there any studying the game from the beginning or are you just kind of you could just oh this works this doesn't work kind of were you that kind of student uh, on your own I mean I would say low level studying like I I was I was reading a little bit uh I actually read uh, poker for dummies uh, okay. I think that, I think that might have been my, my first like how to play hold them which is funny because I know the author uh, I've never told him that. <laughs> oh, that's funny. <laughs> I read that yeah. book. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I over a decade ago. I remember that one. <laughs> yeah, I play poker with him sometimes. <laughs> um, and I think I uh, I had one of Sklansky's books early on. That was good. And then I had uh, Super System. But you know, I wasn't getting really deep. But I was reading a little bit. And um, I mean, mostly I was just a nit. And, you know, in those days, there was plenty of action if you just, you know, wait to have a good hand. Play good yeah. cards and get paid. Yeah. yeah. Well, know. let's even go back a little farther, uh, Steve. I don't know if you – Mike was a uh, youth chess champion. Really? I mean, not just like the local club either, like nationally ranked. Can you talk about that? I mean, were, weren't you like fourth in the nation or something when you were eight? Or I, I forget your <laughs> – uh, not, not exactly that, but, um, yeah, I, I, I played from, I, I played from when I was like eight in like an after school class until about 15. Um, I was ranked as a national master. Um, so I think that year, I think when I was 15, I actually won a prize just as being the highest rated under 18 in NorCal. Wow. Is it all of California? I think it's just Northern California. Yeah, so I got I got pretty good. And then at some point, you know, I was in high school. I just uh, I, I guess lost interest in it. Um, but just just players famously get burned out here. Were you actually do? I mean, were you having like at by age ten? Were you already doing like chess moves in your dreams? I mean, was it like occupying such a large part of your mind where you're like, this is just not normal? Yeah, a little bit like that. Yeah, I like chess. I, I play quite. I, I played. A fair amount, nothing like that. But Jesus, yeah. I, I find there's a lot of poker players that have a correlation with chess. I, I think it's memorizing the patterns, or I don't know. But there, there was a fair amount of chess at the house this summer. Yes, and there Alex, was actually a huge... Alex burned his, burned through his whole bankroll in like 45 minutes in Vegas, but he beat Mike at chess one game. So he felt <laughs> like it was a no. Nope, he hasn't beaten me yet. Oh, well, not yet. I thought he well. You guys used a time difference. Like he didn't he get fifteen minutes and you got like ninety seconds and he beat you. Oh, with okay, the- okay. He hasn't beaten me in a uh, in a straight up game. Okay. He, he's probably beat me on time in a time odds game. That's what it was. Okay. Or maybe I blundered. I don't know. But he he has yet to beat me in a in a straight up game. And I'll I'll celebrate the day he does. He's gotten pretty good. Okay. 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 Yeah, but I'm not going to give it. it you're to not going to give it to him. That, that's no. a good friend. He's got to earn it. Yeah. Of course not. <laughs> um, but win. you know, there there was actually uh, quite a migration of chess players to poker. Um, you know, what, what was it? You know, the 2003 2004 World Series on ESPN made it really popular, and you know, playing online became a big thing. Um, There's no money in chess. I mean, if you actually want to make a play a game for a living, you got yeah, it. Poker's yeah, not almost. really. But uh, yeah, a lot of the same. Well. Uh, the mental skills, uh, I, I was going to say a lot of the same mental skills apply, but um, they are kind of different. But uh, I think I think learning chess, probably especially as a kid, just really helps you develop uh, just ability to think in certain ways. Um, so that, you know, logic-oriented calculation, um, you know, seeing, seeing ahead... Yeah, seeing moves right. ahead. Yeah. Yeah. 
Is know? there any is there any skills where being like good at chess is can hurt your poker game? Like you're thinking too much, or you know what I mean? Like you're 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 going to level two and three too often against too many level one players. Uh I mean, I don't I don't know if you'd attribute that to chess. <laughs> right. Okay. Sometimes I move my chips in an L shape and, uh, you know, get, get called for forward motion. Right. Okay. Can't blame that on chess. I got you. Well, that you can. Yeah, you can with the knight. <laughs> um, so what else is going? It sounds like when I spoke to you last, you had some uh, – we were just talking about it. It's kind of similar to, to – I don't know if it's a San Francisco thing. Maybe you guys are all trained to – you want to do a little more with your life than master a game. But Alex, when we had him on the show, I don't know if you listened to that, was very neurotic about poker and wanting to get out, even though he, he likes all the people he's met and he's done well. When was and this he, uh, When was this podcast? I heard, th- when this was, was Alex on? Uh, I guess close to a year ago. Alex and I actually had a bet. Yeah, so I have heard that one. Yeah, yeah Alex and I actually have a bet, which he's he since had to buy himself out of by buying me a nice dinner, which he did. Uh, that he would be playing. He thought he would be playing zero poker at all in five years. He was betting on him stopping, and oh, then well. finally he, he realized that it's just not going to happen. So he, he <sighs> lost. He lost that bet and had to buy. But um, you, not, to me, you didn't express any contempt for poker. But you're just. It's kind of like a. You don't want it to be the center of your life. Um, is that fair? I don't know. Yeah, I guess that's fair. Uh. You know, it's hard sometimes. It's like I have to be grateful for how good it's been to me and the freedom it allows me. And I I do enjoy thinking about it and, uh, you know, thinking through scenarios. Um, But sometimes sometimes you're just sitting at a table and you feel like it's the last place you want to be. Sure. And, um, you know, and sometimes the conversation at the table, it's just irritating and – you know, uh, repetitive. You feel like you, you, you know, everyone's sure. gonna say, "Oh, I had a flush draw." It's like, yeah, I, I don't care. <laughs> right. <laughs> but uh, you got to so, be able to, you got to be able to tolerate fools, maybe in terms of their, their socially. I guess I, I'm, I can see you not to being real well in that, doing real well in that aspect of it. Yeah, maybe. Um, but I guess. I, yeah, so I guess a, a balance is important because if you're if you're spending your whole life at a casino, then you know what's the point, <laughs> right? Um, yeah. yeah. What uh, What are you playing mostly now? Is it uh, tournaments or cash? Um. Well, it's hard to play mostly tournaments because they're only around sometimes. But uh, I'm trying to play. I'm trying to fill my schedule with tournaments to the extent I can. Um, so next week I'm going out to Florida to the Seminole Hard Rock. Uh, never been out there. I've heard such good things. Um, and what makes that trip really attractive is there were like four tournaments in a five day span that I could play. Uh. So, you know, it, making a trip out of it feels more justified. Yeah. Okay. Is this yeah. their is this their yearly whatever it is three million guarantee five million guarantee? So the the thirty five hundred is a two million guarantee. Uh, okay. And just just from what I've been seeing, and I haven't looked that closely into it, it looks like they have tournament series of this size often. I mean, at least like four times a year. Um, and okay, I've never been there, so I don't I don't know exactly, but uh, it looks like they they do this pretty often. Okay, cool. But originally, you're kind of uh, well, maybe not originally, but at least as I understood it, you were re- really kind of a, a PLO grinder and then not randomly, of course, but you won the, the main event at Tahoe last year. And now you're playing a lot more. What is my long wordy question? Oh, are you still playing PLO cash up at, uh, up in San Francisco? Or is that- yeah. Um, I, I am, but less, uh, the game has been less available. It's been kind of disappointing. It's, uh, I mean, it's only a Tuesday, Thursday game, uh, reliably. Um, and it, you know, it used to start at two or three in the afternoon. Now it won't start till like six or sometimes seven in the evening. Um, I don't like to play that late. Yeah. Uh, okay. that and my, my Thursday 
my Thursdays have been less available lately, so uh, I, I would play it, but I haven't been playing much of it. Okay. Uh, you texted me about having like a really good two five session. I wasn't sure. Is that <laughs> is that like is that game selection partly? Because I know there's a couple of guys you know who are really world class who who play in that PLO game. So do you kind of game select too there if it's if there's not a couple uh, whales around you? Oh just... Monday. Um... Oh that oh, that that was Monday. It was, it was that was yeah. There PLO was no day. PLO. Oh, oh okay. So to get uh, back to the uh, maybe you didn't want to answer. The last time I talked to you, you were. In terms of your question about getting away from poker, you were like talking about wanting to get involved with maybe helping with solar energy and maybe working on like development and part of the thir- developing world. And yet, you, you, you were you were bursting with ideas at the moment. I don't know. Maybe I got just, a lot of ideas. So, uh, are any of those? Uh, I mean, what what what's next? What, what what's your adventure after Florida? Do you have anything on the horizon, non poker wise? Um. Yeah. So. I'm going from Florida to um, Minneapolis, where I uh, my sister lives there, and I I actually just bought on eBay two uh, of the Ant Miner S9 for uh, mining Bitcoin. Oh, okay. And oh, I, cool. I, yeah, uh, little little project. Um, I don't know what to make of it because as the difficulty gets harder. You know, a lot depends on the price, and I don't have any insight as to whether it's really profitable, but um, it's potentially very profitable. Um, but the other thing I'm interested with that is, uh, and I've actually seen threads on this online, people ask, I'm thinking about buying a space heater. Could I buy an ant miner instead? <laughs> um, but so I, I was looking a couple weeks, and the, the, the weekly high in Minneapolis was nine degrees. So uh, the fact that it draws a ton of electricity and gives off a ton of heat is actually kind of a good thing out there. Yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, so I'm doing that, and then uh, I'm coming back, and uh, I was going to play a tournament series, uh, part of the LAPC. Uh, okay. But I'll be, I'm actually, I think I'm going to drive down your way, either to LA or San Diego, park my car, and fly to Mexico City for a few days, just a little vacation, and then come back and play that tournament series. Right on. What, going back to this uh, ant miner, um, I know one of my, one of our buddies, uh, Doug, um, he was mining Bitcoin for a while, uh, back when it was you know four hundred bucks in uh, Bitcoin. Um, mm-hmm. As we, I think there's twenty one million available, and you know we've mined sixteen million of them. It, it gets harder and harder to, to find the, the few available bit, Bitcoin that are out there, right? Yes. So you have to have better and better computers to be able to do this, correct? Yeah. Okay. So this ant miner, um, what, uh, how long does it take to mine one Bitcoin? Do you know? Um, at the current difficulty, I believe it's about a year and a half. Holy uh, shit. Yeah, I've... Okay. Yeah, I, I remember I, Doug saying he was getting like two Bitcoin a week. That's that's not happening now. That's not happening. <laughs> okay. Oh hell no. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Wow. All right. Yeah. But are you partnering? Are you partnering up with people on this, or is this your own? Um. Yeah, sort of. Well, so I got two of them. I'm going to set one up in uh, my sister's place and set one up at a friend's place, and. Um, you know, so we're, I'm basically partnering with them on. Uh, you know, I don't need to give you the terms of the deal, but yeah, we're splitting the right now no, yeah, in a way. Okay. Yeah. And what? What? Uh, how much do these things run? The average these computers. Price. Yeah. Um, I got mine for five thousand. Okay. All right. Five thousand each. Uh, okay. So they were selling for two thousand, but they sell out instantly. Um, I saw offers to like pre-order them for about three thousand, but uh, well, then you're losing time. But then there's there, those those sites also also looked a little shady. Um, yeah. I, ironically, it's not reputable to buy them with cryptocurrencies, um, hmm. because then you don't have a transaction record. You don't have you know if they just decide not to ship it to you, you don't really have any recourse. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, Interesting. 
Like it's kind of <laughs> okay. So maybe basically, it, timeline wise, this thing should pay it off in about you know, seven months or eight months or something. Uh, well, that's a lot of speculation on both the price and the difficulty. Which that's a good point. Yeah, we, the we difficulty. Were talking, we're joking that the price of Bitcoin went down four hundred dollars within five minutes of recording the podcast. So yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I try to only check it like once a day. <laughs> <laughs> How's that going for you? <laughs> yeah. Oh, I'm, terrible. Uh, I'm kind of an inhabitant of Bitcoin Island here where I'm just like looking out to see, looking for some information. Yeah. Um, so I like if I talk to someone who's real positive about it, it's like, yes, this is going way up. And then, of course, there's people who are like this whole thing could go to shit at any minute. Obviously, you're of the opinion that Bitcoin is going to keep growing, right? At the price. Otherwise, you wouldn't be doing this. Uh, I think so. Yeah. Okay. 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 Are, are, are you, you involved in any Ethereum Litecoin? No, I've been meaning to, but I uh, just haven't gotten around to it yet. Okay. Uh, which I guess it's supposedly pretty easy to do. I just haven't done it. <laughs> yeah, it's it's super simple. It, you, are you on Coinbase? Yeah, I'm on Coinbase. No, yeah, uh, it's just as easy as buying Bitcoin. It's a point and well, click. But that's yeah. Yeah, I wouldn't know about that. He wouldn't have. Well, he's got all his Bitcoin from from. We we gave a little biography of you that you. But Mike also has a pretty all lies. Well, <laughs> yeah, we, I, we didn't we didn't mention. We just talked about you winning the main event. But I was going to say, uh, Mike also had a pretty incredible run online a few months ago. Steve, he won the eighty k for ACR, and then the next week he won the high roller. So nice, fucking so congratulations, that's, brother. That's awesome. Yeah, thanks. Right it was on. a good month. Yeah, nice run. Jesus. Uh, he fucking runs good, Steve. Come on, <laughs> stop kissing his ass here. Yeah, there's no nothing That's, to do no, with this. There's the no skill bitterness on my part. No, I can tell um, you. Yeah, you got to run good, but. Yeah. Know. Um, Jesus, what the fuck is going on here? I'm sorry. Just check my Bitcoin prices here again. It's down 2,000 <laughs> in five hours. Okay, I'm going to throw the phone away. There we go. Sorry. <laughs> Pay attention. Sorry, I missed that. Uh, we got eight straight weeks of million dollar tournaments on ACR here, right? Or nine oh, straight yeah. weeks. Are you gonna? Did you play this past Sunday? I did. Uh, probably my worst Sunday grind yet. I, th- I only had one cash. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> In I don't know, maybe I don't even know how many buy-ins I put in. Fifteen, twenty. Well. Yeah. Do you uh? Were you just pressing the? Were you just? I mean, do you do you have any tilt issues, either live or online? I actually, I actually felt like I was tilting a little bit online. Um, I, well, I, I'm not sure if tilt's even the thing to call it. Like, I like to have six tables running at once, but when I have just one tournament, I'm still in, and I'm like not sure if I want to register anymore. I was calling off light. Just to like just to, just to end your day, just either get chips or die, right? Which is, you yeah. know, not the right decision mathematically. But then again, maybe not being glued to the computer for one tournament is worth something too. Right? So, yeah. Uh, yeah. No, I, I actually felt pretty rusty. I haven't um, haven't really played online in quite a while. <clears throat> Yeah, I'm gonna jump back in. I don't know how. Maybe, maybe it'll it will feel n- new and exotic because I haven't really done much of it. About uh, about about Tahoe too. Uh, I was expecting you to say that you have like tilt issues and anger management anger man- management issues, but you, you didn't you didn't you didn't fess up to that, huh? Oh well, I might have anger management issues. Okay, we can edit we we can edit this part out. But, but Mike Mike first <laughs> of all is like a pretty uh, is a pretty big dude, who I guess if he's got a few drinks in him is looking for trouble. Uh, sometimes really? <laughs> i mean he, he he was just walking around top. trouble he was can just, be fun <laughs> he was just walking around just randomly threatening guys guys just sitting there drinking some i was not some, threatening <laughs> anyone no well he Grabbing wasn't threatening them he was it in their lap no he was he was just he was just insulted i didn't actually witness this the next day he he, he was foggy on what happened but it was just yeah it, it, it involves stupid people being told they're stupid by the wizard so you know <laughs> Is that fair? Is that a is that a fair representation? No, that's fair. I mean, some of them might not have even been stupid, though. Okay, well, <laughs> we don't know if you are running good in the insult 
uh, in terms of your ac- accuracy there. You were firing many bullets. So, Are you guys uh, fans of uh, Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy? Hitchhiker's Guide I, d- I didn't read it. No. Well, oh, by the way, thank you, great, your, your book, <laughs> thank you for your, uh, your book recommendation, though. That was very good. Yeah. Um, Naomi, Naomi Klein. Yeah, The Shock Doctrine. That's uh, some really eye-opening stuff. It was. And, um, Mike is uh, was appalled by my ignorance. He actually bought me the book. So, really? What the what, what's the book about? Uh, would you care to surmise it? I guess it would be uh, basically the the Iraq War and all these different things are like normally the the old theories of capitalism where the powers that be want stability for a good market is it's kind of been turned on its head, where war and uh, natural disasters and all this is very good for a lot of people. They make a lot of money off it. Is that is that a fairly decent condensed version of it? Yeah. The the subtitle is um, The Rise of Disaster Capitalism. Hmm. And <laughs> the first chapter is quite a read. Uh, don't read it before bed. I made that, that mistake. The first chapter is about sort of the origins and methodology methodologies of torture as an interrogation concept. Um, like CIA projects in like the 40s, 50s, 60s. Um, the goal was to basically destroy a person's identity so that they would be a blank slate that you could reform as you saw fit. And the author makes the argument that essentially U.S. foreign policy has been to do that to countries. Okay, okay. Um, huh, Interesting. I to really, see, yeah, how yeah. people can make a profit from that. I mean, if you're building tanks, you don't make any money in, in peacetime. <laughs> right, right, and and I mean, it ranges from uh, you know Pinochet in uh, Chile in 1973 to uh, Katrina. Okay. Um, you know, all over the world, um, you know, patterns emerge. Yeah. Yeah. The 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 uh, the IMF and all the sort of national global pro-capitalist uh, systems come under look really awful because they, they they will not help after help quotation marks after a disaster until you surrender a good part of your economy to their to their wishes and needs but but it's definitely a definitely a head scratcher makes you look at uh, take a thing take shit you've been looking at every day and uh, question the way question the way you've been looking at it yeah yeah I'm reading a book right now my brother got me for Christmas. I can't remember the title, but it's about uh, CIA interrogation and mm. how they get information out of guys and uh, as quickly as humanly possible, um, you know, so that when they capture the terrorist, they want to get information out of him before the other team realizes he's been captured and change their plans. You know, I think I heard uh, I heard tickling is actually very effective. Amazing. Amazingly. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't. <laughs> no, ironically, I haven't read the whole thing yet. I'm only a couple chapters in, but um, it, it doesn't really sound like there's much like quote unquote torture as you would think. It's um, basically just kind of bending their mind. I mean, they haven't even talked about waterboarding or any of that stuff. It, um, uh, it's it's <laughs> real fascinating. Read. I'll, I'll get you the title when I. Well, Steve, quickly remember. from from Mike's perspective, a couple doughy middle aged white men like me and you who are just trying to get dump some money into our Roth IRA, we're the problem out there in the world. <laughs> so he's he's extremely polite when it gets to this. He would he would let us know gently, but um, yeah. <laughs> uh, you, you guys are all right. It's not. A... Well, I mean, not me personally. I've but, only you know stabbed I mean. myself four times in the eyeball since this interview started. That's about it. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, I did. I did spend quite a bit today trying to find the right the right games to get my son for the, his P two four player today. You know, there could have been. It wasn't really helping anyone other than the. <laughs> hey, you, well, I mean, that's the thing. You have a family. I, I, you know, so that's got to be your priority, right? Sure. I, uh, Absolutely. I'm not in that situation, so. Yeah. Yeah. I can't judge it. Do you uh, do you want to start a family eventually? You enjoy being a bachelor. How, how do you feel? Wow, where is this going? <laughs> um, I don't know, man. <laughs> <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> 
I am curious about what you're saying though. Um, uh, before you wanted to get into uh, solar energy, what what do you want to do with that? Like, what's your what's your plan? What are your ideas? Um. Yeah. So, and that would you this, rather have? Would you rather have a child or a solar panel? I guess we're trying to we're trying to get we're trying to show the soft side of here, Mike. The, <laughs> the children didn't do it. Well, one panel. I think I think a child is worth about forty three panels. Okay, yeah, okay. That's, okay, that's about a good calculation. No, that's I'm fair. sorry, I interrupted. I want to hear about the solar <laughs> energy. Um, so this is actually one of the things that got me interested in um, crypto mining, hmm. is being something that takes a ton of electricity and turns it into money. Yeah, uh, that is potentially a pathway uh, for incentivizing solar. Oh, right. Uh, for instance. Uh, if you go to Berlin, right, let's say you're, let's say they charge you 15 cents per kilowatt hour, right? I don't know what the actual number is. Okay. Um, and you, now you build solar panels and you generate more than you use. They'll pay you 20 cents per kilowatt hour for your excess. Okay. Again, again, I don't know what the actual numbers are, but I know that they will pay you more for your excess than they would charge you for your demand. Okay. In the U.S., it's just the opposite. Um, that kilowatt hour that they might charge you fifteen cents for, they'll pay you four cents for. Uh. So, you're not incentivized to build more solar than you can use in electricity. Yeah. But this concept of a machine that just takes electricity and put turns it into money is potentially a bridge there. Yeah. Right. I was doing some rough numbers and I mean, you know, the assumptions are uh, uncertain, but rough numbers. If you are considering building a seven kilowatt system for your house uh, and you're just using it to offset your electricity use, it'll pay for itself in about 10 years. Right. Okay. Um, now, let's say instead of using it for your own or for your normal electricity consumption, let's say you're buying that same seven kilowatt system and an Antminer S9. Okay. Now that package would pay for itself in about three years. And after those three years, you have free electricity. Right? Yeah. Um, and then you also have this uh, extremely hot, noisy crypto mining device that may or may not be valuable and working and whatever else at the end of three years. <laughs> um, I, I, I actually have no idea what their lifetime is supposed to be, but not no idea, but I don't know if it's more than three years. <laughs> yeah, um, maybe not. If, uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm pretty sure Mike, you know what Steve does for a living as a fireman, but he was there on the front lines kind of for a while. They're fighting the fire, fire and you were, Oh, that talking, right. And you were, um, this was going on right when Tahoe, we were watching the news and you were talking about maybe offering a little volunteering when you got back. Did you, um, did you get a chance? Did you look into that or did you get a chance to help out at all with that? Yeah, I did a couple things. Um, okay. So I, at first you were talking about the Southern California's fires, uh, at first, but there were also major fires, uh, in the North Bay and, um, you know, yes. uh, yeah, like the wine country, uh, Napa and cities like uh, Santa Rosa and um, parts of Mendocino and, uh, you know, a little bit out um, like east on 80 towards like uh, Grass Valley and Placerville. Um, yeah. And they were uh, horrific and they um, they were huge and, you know, uh, un unexpected. And yeah. uh, there were a lot of flash of evac evacuations. So. I, um, I did a couple things. I, I tried to volunteer for Habitat for Humanity, but they can't build anything for quite a while. Um, and actually this was months ago, so maybe they're, maybe they're up and building houses. Um, so I did a shift at their, like their store, which, you know, funds their projects, but that, that wasn't that thrilling. Uh, and then I spent a couple days building and placing, uh, waddles which are essentially think of like a 20 foot sock filled with, you know, some sort of organic matter. Some of them were just straw. Some of them were like compost and, um, 
you know, mycelium, a certain kind of fungus. Okay. Uh, and th- their purpose is to absorb uh, water runoff before it hits the watershed. Because mm-hmm. um, that's one thing people don't think about so much is, you know, uh, these fires happen in the fall, the rains come in the winter, and all that area that uh, got so scorched, um, that, that water runoff is toxic. Yeah, um, okay. Right? All that plastic burning, paint, you know, whatever's in people's houses. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah, you're right. And there's also it politics surrounding it, too. Like, some companies are better than others at, like, uh, protecting their workers who are doing evacuations. Or, uh, uh, sorry, uh, excavation. Um, some people are selling lots. They're real cheap, you know. The, their, their house got burned down, and they... Uh, you know, some people are going back and rebuilding, but I think I think you still can't build anything for quite a while because of the permitting process. And I'm yes. sure as soon as you rebuild, you're probably your uh, your homeowner's insurance has probably has to triple just to they protect themselves for the next time it comes through, right? Yeah, maybe so. I don't know. Um, yeah, that's that's pretty interesting. We just had some rain down here in in California and. This uh, Thomas fire, uh, for those of you guys listening in England and Australia, it um, it was the biggest recorded fire in California history. It was in huge. fucking December. It it, it it was enormous, and um, it uh, completely caught us off guard. And you listeners that were here when uh, when I was talking about it, yeah, I was half a mile from my house, and then I basically just lived at work for uh, three weeks straight, and. Uh, it um, yeah, it was pretty nuts. But now we're starting to get the rains, and so what happens is is all this brush and um, all the trees that have burned. I mean, it burns all the way down, and uh, it burns the entire tree in the bush, and then it continues burning, and it burns all the roots. So now these mountains that have no grass, bushes, or trees in them, that it's just a giant wall of ash and uh, and mud and <laughs> dirt. And so when it rains now, that those root systems are no longer holding that mud in or that dirt. Uh, so it just washes down and then it takes out more houses. Um, so we've been the last couple of days, I think, have had 13 or 15. It was an odd number um, of uh, deaths. Just yeah, from I the, saw uh, 15. 15. Okay, yeah, just from the, uh, just from the mudslides. It's, yeah, um, people talk about Santa Barbara uh, is getting hit really hard. Did you uh, experience it where you are? Uh, no, there, there was a couple little mudslides that closed down the freeway. Um, but, uh, I go back to work, uh, tomorrow, so I'm sure I'll hear all about it. And then, um, it, um, yeah, it's, it's, uh, pretty nuts. I was going to, what was I going to say? Yeah. I, I would think being, I, I don't know, I want to say forest ranger with the right, but being, uh, I don't know if it's as complicated as chess or as interesting, but. When I was up camping with my son, we talked to a fireman. Maybe I told you that, Steve. And they were talking about, you know, which areas they do the controlled burns at. You know, they got to get all the brush out of there. Mm -hmm. Because that's where, like, the fires are really spread, right? Yeah. Steve, because it's not really, I mean, the trees and the houses, of course, burn as well. But these, when it's dry and you get a lot of brush, that's the. So anyways, yeah. they t- they talked about which areas need a, need a burn and, you know, that kind of stuff. You have to, like. You, you got to be strategic about it, and you definitely. I mean, I've been doing this for almost two decades, and and you really don't know what when you do a control burn. You really truly don't know what what the fire is going to do until you put it on the ground and you watch it burn and see what it does. You know, you can guess, and most of the time you're right, but uh, yeah, you just really don't know. But basically, when you're doing a controlled burn, is what you want to do is you're purposely starting a fire so that you can create this giant. Um, uh, breather, this uh, safety zone, you're, you're burning up the brush in a controlled fashion so that if a wildfire comes through here a month later, there's nothing for it to burn. It's already done. You know, so you're trying to do it in in good weather conditions or at least good so that you can control the fire. You know, there's not going to be any wind, hopefully, um, you know, and you're strategically burning it off in areas section by section so that you can have these small controlled burns that you can control instead of when you have 30 mile an hour winds and you know, you, it's just going, <laughs> you know, so you want to do it in strategic areas where, um, like you said, like there's a, like there's a fair amount of brush. 
Uh, we call them one hour, 10 hour, 100 hour fuels and thousand hour fuels. A one hour fuel would be something like uh, uh, light grass, like dead grass. Uh, 10 hour fuel would be like light twigs and, and leaves and stuff like that. Um, 100 hour fuels would be trees that are, uh, you know, a couple inches in diameter and thousand hour fuels would be like giant trees. And the theory is, is after it rains and they start to dry out, um, how long would it take for them to dry out with sun and, you know, dead grass? I'm impressed you know this much, Steve. I mean, I know it took you like 15 years to figure out which direction to point the hose when the water's rushing out of it. <laughs> <laughs> so the fact that you know now about controlled burns, it's like, you sure, any, you know, that's very... That's, that's what promise. I do for a living. It's a... <laughs> It's, it's fascinating, man. It really is. I mean, like, I, I remember as a kid just being really fascinated with, uh, uh, with fire, how it, uh, how it burns, how to put it out, how to control it, using fire to put out other fire. Um, it's, uh, it's, it's really fascinating to me. You know, that, you know that rusting metal is essentially the same thing as a fire or an explosion? It's just oxidation of a material, except it's happening extremely slowly. A fire, it's happening really, really fast. Okay, it's just that's interesting. Oxidizing a material and it gives off heat and light. And rust does as well. It just does it incredibly slowly. <laughs> and very, very slowly, so much so that and, and unless you're using a uh, um, a thermometer that can measure just the finest minutia of temperature, you're never going to pick it up or, uh, or the light, but, uh, it's the same thing. It's just happening really, really slowly. Okay. I've had enough of the fire, Steve. I was just, okay. light. I don't give a shit about it. <laughs> 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 All uh, do we have uh, any uh, poker hands? We can get some, uh, help from the wizard with. I, uh, I've got one. Um, okay. M Mike, okay. do you mind doing a little strategy here? Yeah, go for it. Okay. Uh, first, I'm going to tell you guys about uh, Elliot Rowe. That's who I'm talking about, that soft-spoken English linguist. Get a warm-up routine before you play. And what better way than to listen to a calming Englishman talk to your subconscious and tell it to play the best that it is capable to your full potential. By listening to these tapes for the type of game that you're about to play, you will rise from that 10-minute nap and be on your A game. Imagine playing your A game all the time. He's got his leap buster package. I have that one. He's got bankroll management, downswings, folding when you're beat, letting go of mistakes, poker anxiety. Check out his free seven-minute tilt buster. The links are all in the show notes, or go to headsuppoker.poker. You can find the link there. Use the coupon code HUPOKER. Score yourself a discount. S-Y-S-C, man. Save yourself some cash. H-U-POKER. Okay. This one... Um, Kind of a neat backstory to this one. Uh, this was up at uh, the Chumash Casino. This is up in San Inez. And um, so you weren't on last week, uh, Mike, but I talked to uh, Carlos and uh, Chris Cusha about it. Uh, the, uh, the first girlfriend I ever had when, uh, when I was in, um, uh, when I was a kid, I was 14 and she was 12 and we were together for several years and then changed schools, went separate ways. And and uh, anyway, she's been out here for the last uh, month or so, and so we've been uh, uh, visiting, and uh, she's here at the house now. I flew up to um, um, to San Inez, uh, and we hung out for a while, and then uh, we flew back here. We've been here for the next couple of days. i got to fly her back up uh, wow. tomorrow morning. And, uh, this, is so anyway. this, is, this is serious. It's fun. It's fun. Yeah, she's got to go home here. She's She lives out in... Uh, uh, <laughs> New Orleans. But, Usually uh, women aren't allowed in the Barton home for more than like six hours before they're given a, a gift basket and an Uber ride. <laughs> a flower if they're lucky. and then. Uh, <laughs> I'm sorry, Steve. I don't know why I'm so negative. Go ahead. <laughs> so anyway, so I was up there and, uh, you know, she was working uh, for, you know, six hours at a time or whatever. So I made my way down to the uh, casino and I would play a little one-two cash or if they had a tournament going, then I'd jump in that. And uh, this was one of those tournaments. It was a um, $150 tournament at the uh, casino. Um, I think there was maybe six tables, something like that. Uh, horrific play. I mean, like, uh, I almost felt sorry for this one guy. Like, I, I, uh, it was second hand, I believe. I looked down at Kings. He'd, 
he'd raised, uh, I three bet, and then he shoved. It was 200 big blinds. And I, I paused for a second. I'm like, does he ever not have aces here? I'm like, what are they, whatever. I have kings. I call. He had pocket threes. So excellent, excellent place to play. Uh, okay, hmm. so this hand. What's that? <laughs> yeah, I see some weird shit, huh? <laughs> yeah, no kidding. <laughs> I guess that's why you don't fold kings. I guess not. Right. right? <laughs> well, okay. Let's see. I re-raised to seven bigs, and he shoved 200. And what, am I missing something here? What, well, all right, whatever I call. I'll just rebuy. <laughs> well, Mike would also call with kings there, Steve, so I guess the, the discussion's over with. Oh, no, okay. we, got a, we got a different hand. Okay. <laughs> yeah. All right, so this is $150 tournament. Uh, blind levels are 100, 200. Uh, we're nine-handed, uh, and we are under the gun. Uh, we have basically a starting stack. We've got uh, 9,700. Um, we've got ace-king off under the gun. Uh, nine-handed, blind levels, 100, 200. Um, you know, I kind of described the play already. What, uh, what sizing are you guys making it here under the gun? Well, that's interesting. You know, the first thing I remember, I actually, um, Mike, I got to, Mike uh, graciously showed me his, his 80K win, the hand history. I went through that with him. Oh, cool. And if I'm not mistaken, didn't you min raised throughout from every position? Um, I, I, I don't I, know. I, I, I'm, not, I'm not sure. Um, I, I, I change week to week on, on bet sizing. On yeah, I, so, I do too. Uh, but, I mean, I guess... Anywhere from two to three X is probably fine is just pick, you know, pick a size and do it with your whole range. Although right. you're saying this is a really juicy game where people, you know, probably don't like to fold. So maybe you can go a little bigger. Okay. okay. Uh, you're still at 50 big blinds, you know, not not 30. So um, late, lately what I've been doing is I'll min raise under the gun and then once you get to later positions I'm actually opening bigger okay um, because it's more about hand just strength. getting well it's it's more uh, my since my range is weaker I want the blinds to be to get a worse price to continue right yeah. Yeah. Um, whereas my under the gun range is strong so you know, I want to incentivize players to um, to play with me more. Yeah, I you know I had gotcha. Greg Raymer on the podcast a couple of years ago, and he said that exact thing. He said basically two uh, x under the gun, three x on the button for those reasons, and he said kind of increase it each position. You know, going forward towards the button. Yeah, and there's kind of trends like it used to it used to be popular to do the opposite. Yes. Um, but now that's more what I'm uh, going with. Um, although I'm not married to it either. So if you, you know, if you think you have an exploitative reason why, you know, to deviate from your standard strategy, then, you know, go for it. Um, okay. But my, my, my thought here was that uh, um, these players are probably not going to notice bet sizing very much. Um, I've got a good hand. I'm, I'm going to go a little bit bigger. Um, so okay. I went, uh, I went 700. So I went a little oh, bit more okay. than, uh, all right. That's than, big. Than three X. Um, but, uh, I make it seven, uh, folds around to the small blind. Uh, he calls and the big blind calls. Now the small blind stack is about ours. He's, he's got about 10,000. Uh, the big blind has about 20,000. Um, so I think if we're going to be playing under the gun and we get two calls, these are the two guys that we want coming along. We've got position on them both. Um, the guy in the small blind uh, with 10K, he's a loose passive player. Um, you know, he's more likely to limp ace jack in early position than he is to raise with it. That kind of guy. Um, okay. The uh, guy in the big blind, he's got a big stack. Uh, he's... Um, he just sat down, but he'd been there a couple of hands, and I saw that he was on his uh, phone and his iPad, kind of both at the same time, and I asked him what he's doing, and he said that he's got a bunch of uh, sports bets going on. So, uh, mm. probably a gambling guy. Yeah. Okay, uh, so 
no antis yet. Uh, so with uh, one, two hundred blinds, we got uh, three guys in for seven hundred. The total pot is twenty one hundred. We go to the flop, and the flop is king of diamonds, ten of diamonds, four of spades, and we have the ace of diamonds. Okay, king of diamonds, ten of diamonds, four of spades. We have the ace of diamonds, and we got ace king. Uh, small blind checks, big blind checks, and it's on us. Into 2100, what are you guys doing? I want to say 900. Okay. Um, I, I, yeah, I think I can't think of a reason not to bet here. Multi way. Um, and like you said, the, the, the small blind certainly is passive, so he's probably not going to put any chips on. Even like if you check the back the flop, he's not going to take a stab on the turn necessarily with any two cards kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Um, 900. Uh, yeah, that sounds, I was going to be, be, I was going to say 1100 a little more, but. Okay. Okay. What, what's, what's your reason for, for that sizing? I mean, it's more that I feel like it's kind of a standard sizing between, you know, between a third and a half. Um, and I don't feel like there's like, I have a particular reason to bet bigger or smaller. Um, yeah. Okay. It's pretty standard. You, yeah, you open your hand, you, uh, you open a hand and you, you hit your flop and you want them to get to put a f charge them to put a few chips in there. Okay. Hope they're second, hope they're second best. Okay. Yeah. Do you have, I'm sorry, do you have the ace of diamonds? I have the ace of diamonds. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So we got the, we got the back door. Um, I, what do you, uh, uh, quickly to Mike, the, to the, what if Mike, what are you doing? If you're, uh, if you check raise here. If you're check raised, are you ever? I mean, I feel like that's what's going to happen. <laughs> but, uh, uh, I mean, just you know, fifty fifty big blinds deep. I was I wasn't sure if there's like a magic number in your head where if it's like, well, if it's eight hundred big blinds and I'm check raised, I can flat and see what they do on the turn. Um, thirty big blinds, I'm always going with it. Fifty, it's like, okay, what what is the play against a check raise here? I think from the loose passive player, you could find a fold. Okay. Maybe. Yeah. Uh, and from the gambly guy, maybe not. Uh, calling I, down. I don't know. I, I, I often, I often feel like I'm guessing in those spots. Uh, so the one thing is having the ace of diamonds in your hand is not necessarily a good thing f facing a check raise. Right. Um, cause that's some of your opponent's bluffs. Yeah. Um, you can't. You I, can't. You probably. You can't take uh, against some players. You can take pocket tens out of their range, but I think the, certainly the small blind was pro would set mine with pocket tens here probably. So <laughs> he's not going to three bet an under the gun opener oh, under the gun opener with that hand. Yeah. Or, or I mean, even if he would, sometimes you definitely can't say that he wouldn't flat call. Right. Sure. <laughs> um. Yeah, so there's tens and threes, and there's uh, three combinations of king ten suited. Yeah, there's sorry, also two, they, two, they also two could combinations be, of king ten suited. I mean, at this level, this is a little hundred dollar tournament. Steve's playing. Uh, somebody with king jack or king queen thinks they just hit a home run here too. You got you, you got to remember that too, right? Yeah, and that's kind of how, why it's hard for me to adjust uh, sometimes. Sure. It's like I, you know, I am not used to seeing check raises from you know top pair third kicker right but yeah. in I, these I, tournaments yeah, maybe that yeah, does five happen. five <clears throat> yeah i felt pretty certain that these guys are gonna um check call with gut shots things like uh um queen nine if they were in there with queen nine suited uh ace jack ace queen um you know uh like ten jack maybe queen 10. Like I, I think they'll check call with second pair there uh, and with gut shots. I don't know about the guy that just sat down, but the um, loose passive player, I think, I think he's calling with, uh, with gut shots. I could be wrong. Okay. So you're charging him. So that, you that bet, Steve? I, I don't think they're ever folding a King. And I think there's a very good chance that they could call a second pair. So right. I, I went in a 2100, I went 15, um, I went 1500, uh, maybe a little bit big in hindsight. And, you know, that might be building a big pot with just a one pair hand, which maybe we don't want to do. Uh, but I went big. I got, uh, I got a call from the small blind 
and then the big blind folded and went back to his iPad. So okay. he uh, must not have had anything. So we go to the turn. Uh, there's 5,100 in the pot. What uh, what do you guys uh, what do you guys think in the uh, the the small blind here? I, I'm thinking second pair gut shots a king. Like uh, I think calling there. With I don't king know if queen. he's I don't know if he's calling, especially with your bigger sizing. Um, again, we don't know the villain. Uh, I think folding gut shots and 10x is the right way to play it, probably. Oh, I think that's the right way to play it. Yeah, so uh, it, it's interesting. Um, so your large size, I think, is kind of an exploit here, okay. right? Uh, because against good players, you know, are you really doing that with your bluffs? Probably not. Probably um, not. I'm probably going smaller. Right. So against that sizing, uh, good players should see your range is too strong for them to continue with, you know, 10x, or, you know, especially the small blind with the big blind left to act. Um, yeah, yeah, it looks a whole lot like, you know, let's say king, queen plus. Okay. Okay. Um, but, you know, if you're playing someone that's not hand reading, then charge them more. Yeah, okay. sure. Okay. All right. So we got ace king off with ace of diamonds. The flop was king of diamonds, ten of diamonds, four of spades. We go to the turn, and the turn is the jack of clubs. Okay, so 5,100 in the pot. Small blind checks. We're heads up with the small blind. What do you guys do here? Well, he's got a couple two pair combos in there now, obviously. Mm -hmm. Jack 10, King 10. King Jack. Of course, if he had Queen Jack, he now has a pair. He's more likely to stick around. Yeah, he's got a pair of uh, an open ender. Uh, I, my first instinct is check back and probably call on the river nine out of ten times, but. If for some reason, if for some reason he's he's hit jackpot here, you don't you don't bust the tournament. You check back, and when he bets three thousand on the river, you call regardless, and you, you're either bluff catching or you know, um, getting paid. You know. Yeah, um, and and that's kind of my first instinct too, uh, just in terms of uh, you know playing the tournament rather than the hand, uh, just the self preservation. Um, I'm wondering if you can, so I think you have about 76 left in your, wait, what did I say? Uh, like 73 left in your stack. Uh, let's see. I've got, uh, That's right. that sounds right. He said you started with 9,600 and put five, I think. We've okay. Got, uh, 700. Yeah. 75. I'm wondering if you can bet fold here. The reason being, I like getting value from the King queen, uh, you know, King, queen, queen, jack, queen, 10. Um, okay. And if you think this guy is passive enough that he's not going to jam on you with those hands, which, I mean, most people most people won't most of the time, right? But every once in a while, you know, someone does and you get bluffed off your hand. Um, yeah. Because uh, sorry. yeah, I, I think I understand. Yeah, again, because you want to um, get that value on the turn because you won't get it on the river. Yeah, exactly. Right? Um, when, the, when the river's a, a three, you're not getting you're not getting in any more from the queen jack. Yeah. Let, let, let's say this was you playing against like someone who you knew was like a real was a real it was a five ten reg playing a, a thirty five hundred dollar tournament. You know, this was. Um, if you're the villain here in the small blind, are you ever? seeing this jack as a great bluffing card like you're going to turn your hand into a bluff now with with some of your range like because the guy never has king jack under the gun well as a you mean as a check raise or as a yeah as a, as as a, a check lead? raise if, if for some reason you called with king nine suited or queen jack suited and um is this a good card to leap into action with a with a bluff no i i don't think so because the the under no. the gun range is too strong it's, it's okay so like all the ace queens, uh, you know, probably not pocket kings with the sizing on the flop, but um, you know, tens. Okay. Uh, well, is that it? 
it, you know, and, and the other thing is like Ace King, you know, sometimes people just don't fold. So sure, it's hard to make that bluff expecting Basically, a fold. You'd be, or, bluffing, or, you'd be bluffing someone to try to get them off a strong range, which is hard to do, especially at this when it, when someone's already put a third of their chips in the pot or whatever it is. Yeah. I mean, at the lower level tournaments, I think you have to worry a bit more about the just like flicking buttons factor. And just like, ah, eh, fuck it. I got a pair and a uh, uh, pair and a straight draw. We'll see what happens, you know. Um, but maybe that's an argument for bet call. Um, but also, you know, the, the, the thing is when you have a strong range and you're putting in, like I was going to suggest betting like 2,500 on the turn, um, you're only leaving five, 5,000 behind. It doesn't look like you're folding, right? Which yeah. means that you're not a good target to be bluffed. Okay. Um, so, so if you I, check, if you check, if you bet here, bet bet on the smaller end or whatever you're bet sizing, and this guy check raises, you you should be beat like eighty percent of the time plus here, right? Against this villain, maybe even a hundred. Yeah, that, I, would, that, that, I mean that, that that's your argument for betting here. Be, well, well, getting yeah, value, I would, I would think you can't so. get on the river, but yeah. I mean, checking is obviously the safer play. I'm just trying to explore if we can. And, and, you know, I think in the heat of the moment, I'm probably often just checking here not to, you know, to try to not let myself make a bigger mistake. Um, yeah. But, yeah, I, I think betting I think betting here, uh, like half pot, is the play. Okay. I think. Okay. Okay. Into 5,100. So just to recap, we got uh, – the board now is King Jack 10 4, two diamonds. We got the Ace of Diamonds with Ace King. Uh, into 5,100. I, uh, I bet. And my reasoning, I, I was thinking bet fold because, um, you know, for like, uh, I just don't see a loose passive player raising that uh, as a bluff here with like, I'm trying to get value from Queen Jack, Queen 10, King Queen, especially. Um, you know, I think that uh, I think he's just calling with those hands. And if he's raising here and he happened to check two pair or a set or something, I, I think I think it's a bet full. Um, but that was my logic. So okay. I uh, I bet two K into fifty one. Um, that leaves us uh, fifty five behind. Um, and uh, small blind calls. He um, he took a little bit to call, uh, but he did call. Um, so we go to the river, we got, uh, 9,100 in the pot. What are we ranging him at here? I mean, that looks like either King Queen or Queen Jack to me every time, but yeah, I don't know. Well, he can also have flush draws. Right, right. Yeah, that's true too. He could have a flush draw, but he can't have the Ace of Diamonds cause we got it. Right. Nice analysis, Steve. I like that. Yep. So... <laughs> So no, this, have, is, uh, this is my level of hand reading, Steve. I finally oh, you know, communicating. I just remembered a dream I had the other night. I had po- I was playing a poker hand in my dream, right? I, I had pocket kings, got it all in pre-flop. Four kings appeared on the board. And my hand was declared dead. <laughs> right. <laughs> it doesn't make any sense. but <laughs> they're Going with the... Uh, he can't have the Ace of Diamonds because we have it. Like, apparently, <laughs> there might be alternate realities where right, there's more okay. than one of them. That actually did have it, the WSOP, a couple years ago. Both guys had the Ace High Flush. They both had an Ace of, ace of Hearts in their hand. Oh, no oh, shit. Wow. <laughs> That's awesome. wonder how long that played out before, uh, how long I they had know. that in there before somebody did uh, Wait, so does, does, the, does the ace eight flush beat the ace seven flush? No, I don't know. I think one had ace king or ace, ace queen. Obviously, they had to uh, just call the hand dead. Yeah. Well, I guess what I'm saying is, you know, there's a, there's a lot of fresh dress. It does, doesn't have in there, but he could still have the queen jack of uh, diamonds. He could have. Um, uh, I mean, I you really like expect eight? a check raise on the flop with the queen jack of diamonds. But... Right. Uh, jack. Jack nine of diamonds, Jack eight of diamonds. Is he really calling that in the small blind? He is loose passive, maybe. Um, things like eight, nine of diamonds. Um, I, I just don't think there's many diamond draws that are in there. 
not a whole lot anyways, just because we got the ace. I don't know. I, 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 I was targeting queen jack, queen 10, king queen, um, and I really didn't put too much stock into the uh, flush draws, but I guess you're right. There could be some out there. Um, okay. Uh, all right. So we go to the river, uh, 9,100 in the pot. The river's the king of hearts. So the final board is king, king, jack, 10, 4. Um, diamond draw does not get there. And the small blind checks again. We got 5,500 in our stack. And there's 91 in the pot. I think it's a shove. Um, because the top pair pairing on the river is a very polarizing card. Right? Like his... His queen jack just went up in value because you're now less likely to have a king. Right. Um, and so it looks, you know, it looks like you either have the nuts or you're bluffing, right? So, uh, you know, in those polarizing spots, a big bet is called for. Okay. I would think so. And, and I don't think he, I don't think he'll ever fold a king. No. Right. Um, and I don't think there's any, you know, like. If he trapped you with King Jack, I mean, good for him, I, I, I guess. Like, right. Okay. Yeah, you okay. might even get you might even get hooked up by, by Queen Jack here. I mean, the guy's got so many chips in the middle. Yeah. Especially, uh, you say he's, have you uh, have you been caught in a bluff yet, Steve? Uh, it doesn't really matter. I mean, either way, I, don't I think. Remember. But I don't uh, yeah, to this guy, I mean, just that might increase his calling frequency with second best. Okay. Okay. I, I did that. I shoved. And then he, uh, um, it was kind of a strange move. He flipped over his hand and then he threw the chips in. So it, when he flipped it over, I thought he had folded and uh, like showing like, oh, I can't call. Here's my cards. But then he threw the chips in and I was like, oh, okay. I guess he called. <laughs> and then I saw what he had. Uh, he had ace queen. Um, so then I was scratching my head wondering, <laughs> did I go somewhere wrong in the hand or <laughs> what, uh, <laughs> what happened here? I love the king on the river because it was like, you're saying, I'm like, Oh, all jacks are calling now. You know, um, like, uh, I just don't see a loose passive guy folding a jack there, especially when the king spikes on the river. Um, but it sounds yeah. like he le he he might he leveled you pretty good on the turn there, making it look like he was thinking of folding, or that was if that was your first instinct. My yeah, my thought was like, ooh, maybe I should have checked. It looks like he's gonna fold, and then he called, and I was like, okay, still got him. But all right, so you guys would have shoved down the river. That that was sound yeah. reasoning with the uh, with the king on the okay. yeah, and the, I mean it does kind of get to the like uh, the value of pot controlling the turn, or even yes. pot controlling the river, the flop, like uh, too. but. Yeah. I bet I bet pretty big I just, on the flop. I just don't really think you can you know, sometimes you get trapped. I, I don't think you can really not push this hand. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I think you know what though, Although, when you guys... uh, checking the turn is a viable option for sure. Uh yeah. that was my first instinct, just uh Yeah. It was we, both we, your we first instinct. Preserve our preserve my tournament life regardless of what happens on the river. But um yeah, I don't know. He's you're usually good there. Yeah, I like his play. I, I I was I think we were all thinking if he was if he's nutty he's gonna be he's gonna be raising the turn, but he didn't really have to raise that turn to get all the chips in by the river. It was gonna be and checking the river too. Like man, hey, you know what though? I really like what you guys were saying about the smaller sizing on the uh, flop. You know, you guys said nine to eleven hundred. That would set up a, a much smaller pot that we could bet or even check, you know, smaller on the turn. And then it's not quite as such a decision on the river. It, the way the board played out, it probably the same thing would have happened, but, um, it, um, well, I don't yeah. think the, the, yeah, the flop bet was not so much as controlling the size of the pot is just giving away your hand strength too much. I think is what Mike was, was yeah. leading to. Yeah. yeah. That was my take on it. Okay. Okay. Right. Talking about the the different like if you want to talk about Mike went deep in the uh, the Tahoe main event after winning it last year you went deep this year right final three tables or two tables I can't remember uh yeah what did I get twenty fourth you got twenty fourth yeah 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 um yeah just talking about how to adjust to competition I mean I don't know how to, you typically those circuit main events are real juicy like early on there's just a lot of guys who don't know what they're doing but by the time yeah, you get like to the end. 
by the time you get near the end, the structure is good enough where it's going to be very pro heavy. Um, was that your experience this year and just, you know, leading into a general discussion about how you adjust towards different levels of competition? Yeah, well, um, I mean, I mean, honestly, lately more of my focus has been trying to play more GTO, which I'm not saying I'm necessarily great at that, but, um, more of my focus has been just trying to play technically correct and be unexploitable. Um, rather than being exploitative, uh, you know, I hate to say it. I'm not, I'm not always, uh, paying attention that much at the table. So I kind of, I try to just have like a really solid, uh, baseline strategy until I see a reason to deviate. Sure. Um, so if that's the case, I'm not changing my play a whole lot when the field gets tougher. Um, but I, well, I mean, I I do some exploitative plays or, you know, target people differently. So uh, it's not a hard and fast rule or anything. Um, Did anything you, I just said make sense? Yep. Okay. Good. Are you uh, are you still getting some coaching? Uh, yeah, uh, not very frequently, but yes, I, I, I'll still consider myself a student. Okay. Do we have another hand here for us, Stevie, here? We got to... Uh... I got a quick one. This is a throwaway hand, but uh, let me. Uh, I, I, I'm sorry. I, I don't. I don't have. Uh, I. I didn't write up the details, but I, I busted the Thunder Valley tournament the same way as you, more or less. Oh, you know, okay. Top, uh, top trip. You know, trips. Top kicker. Bet. 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 And get trapped. <laughs> 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 um, the guy turned it too. You know. I, uh, I wish we had. Um, some specific hands from that 80k I wish I could have asked you to do but there's there's a couple spots I remember being maybe this is, would be talking about exploitive play versus the player's pool where like let's say there's one I think someone opened in middle position and you had like 30 big blinds in the small blind with pocket nines mm-hmm. I don't know if you remember this hand no um, and you just called and it was like a queen high flop and you just called again the C bet and then it just checked to the river and you were good. Uh huh. Like in my mind, maybe this is just poker a couple of years ago. This is uh, this is like a three bet, get it in. Yeah. Or 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 like a check fold on on a lot of flops and just call. Well, and you, flop, you, you, you flop said is... on ACR just quickly what your, your your comment was. It's just people here just don't know, just have the poor double barreling frequencies where you're just gonna know where you are in the turn a lot of time where you can call frequently on the flop without worrying about folding the best hand uh yeah yeah i remember having that impression uh uh, that a lot of people were in the pattern of you know c bet and if they're called give up um you know so so yeah i thought some lighter calls well especially you have to realize people you're using small sizings right like one third pot is pretty common right um you know, and on on the driest boards, like on a queen deuce deuce, you know, it might even be one fourth pot, right? So, so now folding to that bet is a bigger mistake than calling it bad, right? Yeah. Okay, that makes um, sense. Yeah, but I was but, I don't know I, I probably didn't ever read on the specific player, but it felt like a lot of players in the tournament were kind of in the pattern of you know, one bet and give up if it doesn't get through. Right. Okay. I can't. I, I. Yeah. I wish I can't do justice. There's a few hands where it's just. It was obvious. Mike was very. Uh, much more comfortable, maybe, with post flop decisions than I am. Which is, I mean, you know, three bet getting it in with pocket nines. I don't think it's ever thirty big blinds isn't it? against a late position and middle position openers usually. Okay, too. Uh, yes. Yeah, um, so, I mean, I. I don't remember the exact position. I'm not thrilled to get that in. For thirty bigs, I mean, against uh, you know, against cutoff or button, I would, but uh, against any other position, I'm I'm not thrilled to get that in. Right, and three bet folding just feels horrible. So like, it's, yeah. it's flat, it's flat or three bet get it in. I think, yeah, I I, w- I can't remember the stack depth of the opening position, but um, so what does your your schedule look like? In uh, uh, there's the main event in Florida, obviously the thirty five hundred. 
And then the, was there like a couple like half million guarantee one K sort of thing or? Yeah, there's like an eleven hundred and a twenty two hundred, um, and then thirty five, and then oh, on day th- so that's actually a five day event, but on day two of that event there is also an eleven hundred turbo. Nice. So oh, that was fun. were I to not make day two, I could play that. Um, so that's four tournaments right there that are. Uh, yeah, pretty pretty well stacked. To uh, that's that's good to, job good by trip. the uh, the tournament directors there and the people. Anytime you can have more than one good tournament, you know that'll people will travel. Yeah, there's also I think a sixteen fifty on the fourteenth, but that's uh, that's I'm I'm gonna go a little later. You got your um, buddies going with you? No, just just me. Okay, cool. Uh, yeah, got myself an Airbnb situation. Nice. Um, that's the way to do it. Then you can cook and come home and kind of relax a little bit more than in a hotel room. Yeah. Yeah. Fair enough, man. Oh, and uh, Seminole Hard Rock's expensive. It was going to be like 430 a night. Oh, my God. What? Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's ridiculous. Oh, and uh, I didn't even look at uh, vacation rentals for a while. I was looking at hotels until suddenly something came up and like – Vacation rental, fifty bucks a night. <laughs> no, it's expensive. Right. <laughs> Maybe I should be looking that direction. Yeah. Jeez. Check into your room there and bring in like you know, a, 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 bring in your mining equipment with like a special b- bass speakers acting to you know, just out of. <laughs> I'm getting my money's worth out of this. Yeah, no shit. I'm gonna mine with some <laughs> ant miners here. <laughs> Get my money's worth. <laughs> I wonder if anyone's tested just how much power can you draw from the hotel room socket. <laughs> yeah, before you get security knocking on your door. <laughs> Sir, do you have an indoor grow room in here? <laughs> <What's up? laughs> yeah, portable so one. Is, I, uh... I move it every day. <laughs> oh, that's uh, awesome. Vegas 2018. Oh, yeah. I meant to talk to you about that. Oh, uh, gonna, are we going to talk about it uh, on the podcast or well, time? I mean, yeah, yeah I guess yeah. It, 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 am I am I invited or am I just going to have to just break in and see which one of you has the, has the courage to tell a broke gambler that he has to leave? <laughs> uh, well, yeah, you're invited. I mean, I was okay. uh, wondering about your your plans because, um, yeah, it's hard. It, it's we could try to get the same place. I liked it. Um, we could shop around a bit. Which is probably a good idea, but I don't really want to do it. Um, I, I, I love the place, especially the location in the pool. You know what I mean? Those two things were, were perfect. That's pretty hard to beat, right? Yeah. Uh, but we're not we're not going to have Ryan this year, which um, okay. Um, that okay. gives us another room to fill, and then uh, you know other people's plans. You know, a bunch of bunch of gamblers don't have plans for the summer yet, but also. Uh, you know, Olivier has, has a, a newborn, so it's going to okay. be harder for him to get out. Um, okay. A lot of people in that house got their ass kicked last year. I think you oh, – didn't we establish you were the only one who actually won money just because – I mean, you won like just a little bit because you were – Oh, I, I don't think I won. Oh, you didn't? Well, oh, after the – oh, yeah, after you busted, <laughs> probably didn't didn't cash the main, right? So by the end, yeah. Okay. No, actually, there's no way I won. There's yeah, no I don't think anyone. Alex and I got absolutely murdered. Ryan, of course, lost like everything plus six dollars more. Yeah, Steve. And, uh, Steve might have pulled out a small win. Uh, no, I think no, I went zero for six. I was only there a week uh, after uh, after the divorce, and I got uh, I played six tournaments, fucking bangled every one, and then I had to bounce. <laughs> that was it. <laughs> well, Steve, you were the big winner. You got rid of a malevolent uh, other. That's, That's true. Right. That's true. I guess you, in that aspect, you're right. I did win. <laughs> I got, got rid of the biggest uh, cash uh, suck of my life. <laughs> yeah, I, I want to return. I, I, I will have to do like a mental check to see if I'm capable of going and just, you know, playing playing some of the big events and selling pieces and then grinding online and playing two, three at the win and doing some of the 400 dailies. Because last year I was just going for it, playing every WSOP event, and just the buy-ins were well beyond my. So that'll be. I think I'll. I'll I definitely want to return, but uh, yeah, well, I'll, I'll be out there from... for. Uh, I'm going to be there for three weeks, so um, I'll let you know now, uh, Mike. I'd, I'd love a room. <laughs> that would be awesome. Oh yeah. Um, uh, uh, I'm in. Do you know? Do you know which three weeks? I do actually. Um, I got my calendar here. Um, one sec. 
If anyone out there is looking for Steve, you may find him. And if I only come part time, I know which three week I know which three weeks I won't be coming at now. No, <laughs> it's going to be uh, June eighth through June twenty eighth. So cool. Yeah. So well, let's see. That would be the third, fourth. Oh, no, that doesn't make sense. The second, third, and fourth week. Uh, great. Uh, well, I mean, my plan is probably the same as last year, you know, uh, basically stick it out for the whole six weeks. But if I feel burnout, just, uh, you know, fly somewhere for a few days. Yeah. Um, take a break and then come back. Yeah. Yeah. Cause that's, that's the challenge is the mental, uh, drain of it. And yeah. I know I'm not going to fire like 23 bullets into four Venetian events my first five days there. That's the only thing I'm going to change. <laughs> <laughs> you, you wouldn't recommend that because I was actually going to – I was actually trying to fire more this year. <laughs> well, I'm going to have to reread Poker for Idiots. But um, yeah, I think generally less idiotic. Oh, I'm, I'm cringing. The amount of Bitcoin I could have with the 40000 I lost this summer, Steve. <laughs> <laughs> I know, especially at the price it was when the – Maybe right, I was well, doing backflips then when it was up to oh, well, the big it's, man, if you had bought something. if you had bought miners back then, oh jeez, actually that might be before the good ones came out. <laughs> um, yeah, now I'm excited already. <laughs> I wasn't even. I, I thought I, I had burned out in Vegas, but now I'm excited again. I lo- I did look at the schedule. I can't remember if there is. I think they had one or two new tournaments, but it, it's oh, the schedule's gotta, released already. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, old news, huh? <laughs> yeah, it's been up for a little while. I'm See how connected I am. <laughs> I don't know. You you let me on your poker podcast. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> I think they you think they've run out of uh, exotic ideas on sort of new tournaments now that they have the Colossus and the Giant and everything else here. But the marathon uh, was a cool concept. Are they I doing that again? Marathon- the one, the one thing I really liked to see them do is they had one in L.A. and I thought it was cool as hell. It was like 99% pros. Like this would be – is the uh, – what do you call it? The Not the marathon. There's no breaks. Oh, Iron Man. The Iron Man. Yeah, it just runs through the night. So that could be – that could be a cool one. I mean that, that would run like two, di- two straight days if someone would be up for 48. All the true grinders would have a great uh, respect for whoever wins that thing. Oh, yeah. Yeah, or they could do like a um, like a two day event with like a twelve hour per day Ironman structure. Right. That's like, true. like you know, you go home for the night, but when you're there, you play you play the whole time. Oh, I'm looking at the structure. This this is the big news this year. The main event is in the middle of the series. Believe it or not. Oh, what? Uh, or somewhat like. They've got a bunch of events after the main event this year. They moved it up basically one or two weeks. So, um, wow, that's right. Now I'm remembering. Uh, I think that that I think that's a good idea. I don't know. I don't know how the summer traffic in Vegas if that increases or not. But it does always feel anticlimactic, you know. Once you reach like day two of the main event, and I don't even mean if you're in it, but like just walking around the room, it's like, oh wow, suddenly everything's gone. You yeah. know. Yeah. Um, whereas maybe if you play the main earlier than, uh, you know, or at least have the main earlier than there's kind of a wind down period, it doesn't feel as sudden. Um, yeah, the main event looks like it starts on June 25th. I'm sorry. Wait, where is that? Um, uh... yeah, June 25th and, and this whole series goes on for, oh no, 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 no July, July, July 2nd. 2nd. July 2nd. But yeah. but the but the whole World Series goes on through July 14th. So you do have Oh, well, so it's like one week earlier? Yeah, so you do have it looks like um oh oh that's the event. There's the closer. That's the new event. So a week after the main event, you got a 1500 with a million dollar guarantee. Okay, cool. And it looks like you also have um I'm sorry. I'm looking at the main event. You still got the little one drop and another fifteen hundred and a three k three dot three k and yeah, it looks like there's about twelve twelve events after the main event. So that, I mean, that's a meaningful change, I guess. And I don't see the tag that. team in here. Do you see the tag team event? Yeah, early on. Oh, what, what is 
I don't know. I just saw it a second ago. There's two tag teams. There's the 10K and the, the small one again, too, I think. Uh... I'm going to be I'm going to be getting whooping cough that day, Steve. Just letting you know ahead oh, of time. Oh, come on. It'll be fun. Oh, I'd love to play there, with you, Steve. But, uh, <laughs> I'm getting excited here. Nothing else. I am, too. <laughs> Got the Millie Maker. I'll be in town just in time for that. Um, ooh, a double stack event. Well, okay. hopefully we'll we'll see you there, Mike. And you're uh, sounds like you're grounded with po- you're you're the interview is a little different than I thought. I thought you were going to be on a. I'm I didn't realize to- I was being interviewed. I would have said completely different things. Okay, well, a discussion, a chat. I, 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 I thought you were maybe I was would even be speaking to you in the Dominican Republic right now, where you'd be. Uh, Trying not to get sick. What, what, what was what you have to take um, medicine for last time while you were there? Oh well, they got Zika out there. Okay, that's what you were taking. Oh, that's a for. fun one. You should try to get that. Well, I mean, as diseases go, I think it has uh, you know less downside than a lot, yeah. a lot of other ones. Yeah. 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 Pretty much, just don't get pregnant. Exactly. Yeah. 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 So just and and only for pregnant. only for like three or six months. Yeah. <laughs> it could be worse. Like, than I- I don't think it even makes you sneeze. <laughs> but, I, I mean, yeah, it's probably better to not have it. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, and, and uh, malaria. That's the one you don't want to get. Yeah. Right, okay. Yeah, that one's yeah. a bitch. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah there's no medication for times. Zika. It's just horrible. It's right up there with the bubonic <laughs> plague. Yeah, okay, boys. Well, cool. uh, Mike, let me know when you're coming down. You said you're kind of coming down south here sometime soon. So yeah, yeah, yeah. sounds Check good. Out uh, no early, early February. Okay, yeah. sounds good. Cool. Right on. Do you have a uh, Twitter or anything you want to throw out there, uh, Mike? Oh uh, no, I don't. He's okay. a, this is an anti-social media kind of guy here. No, I, I tried to make a Twitter, but I I didn't understand it. <laughs> Okay, but you're mining Bitcoin. I love it. <laughs> Alrighty, bro. Your Facebook, your Facebook. When you do, when you do say something on Facebook, it's always kind of interesting. I gotta say, so I, I follow you there. But uh, yeah, yeah, that's for the. That's for that. That's for the. That's for the amigos. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Fair enough. Yeah, I'm not a public figure. <laughs> All right. Well, thank but you for he, uh, he, he making was, yourself uh, available, Mike. Uh, well, I don't want to go, but I was going to say, uh, Mike doesn't like to get his photograph taken either at these poker tournaments. <laughs> can you can you share that with Steve? I, I I don't even I don't even know what you're thinking half the time, man. I got to say, but that was pretty. I was kind of outraged in the blog. I mean, here he is going for back to back, and there was no mention of him at all. Hmm. Like when they're they're given like chip leaders for day three, and the, there wasn't one hand where, where I was two. seeing him. Um, yeah. So like I'm finally I'm like man what's going on here why what, what you know don't they realize he's like well maybe it's because I keep flipping off the guy who's taking my pictures <laughs> <laughs> like I, I don't know Steve because I am so hungry for love and attention from people it, like it doesn't it doesn't occur to me these people well, right here you know sometimes sometimes you know the the skin around your eye itches a little bit and you just gotta right. you know mas- massage it. It's your middle finger. Yeah. yeah. No other finger will That's do. That's true. When I say he's given the middle finger, he's not turning to them and staring them down, you know. Subtlety. Uh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> Plausible deniability. Well, okay. <laughs> That's the way to say it. But, um, you know, well, that that tournament was actually funny because, I mean, like like you said, I'm, yeah, I'm going for back-to-back. I'm like, that's a story, right? Uh, I think there was even one hand that they mentioned a hand I was in, but didn't mention me. Just said like button calls, right? <laughs> and then like they have the they have their list of not- notable players, and like most of them I haven't heard of, and some of them have less chips than me. It's like right. you guys are missing the story. <laughs> <laughs> the angry bohemian in the three seat. Yeah, they're just trying to trying to describe you without giving your name. <laughs> Yeah. Well, man, I'll be your PR person this summer when you make a de- deep run of the main event. Yeah, well, let's wait till it happens. Okay, <laughs> true. And you too. Right on. One of okay. uh, we got to hit big this year. Someone. I was gonna say, yeah, we can't, we can't, can't be the same for sure. We will. We will. We'll smack it. All right. Okay, boys. Thanks for coming on, Mike. Yeah. Thank yeah you. Th- thanks this for having fun. me. This is fun. All right. Good deal. Okay. Uh, thank you for tuning in 
and here is your weekly motivational speech. You owe you an explanation. You need to look at yourself in the mirror and say, why are you only giving 50%? What's wrong with you? You need to put yourself on punishment. You need to tell you no more TV, no more snacks, no more desserts, no more, no, we working out now. No, no more alcohol, not right now. Not, no, I can't handle it right now. You need to tell you that you owe you something. You've never looked at yourself in the mirror and said, you let you die. Until you get to that point, you let you die. You've never, you're not brave enough. You want to put it on somebody else. The reason why I'm not successful is because of my boss. Have you ever looked at yourself in the mirror and said, I'm not getting up on time. I'm not going to work on time. I'm not putting in 120% when I'm at work. I let me down. What changed? I changed and I stopped being a victim. I stopped saying I've got to wait for good things to happen to me and I said I'm going to grind. I'm going to fight. I'm going to work. I'm going to press toward. I'm going to learn. I'm going to do everything in my power every single day. I'm going to do everything in my power to become a victor and not a victim. What do you want in your marriage? What do you want with your son and your daughter? What do you want in your health? What do you want financially? Like how much money do you want to make a year? What do you want to drive? How do you want to live? Stop just waking up like an accident. What do you want? And then once you find out what you want, spend the rest of your natural life waking up and going after it.